let's model some exponential decay. So my exponential decay, we're going to deal with the formula a sub t equals a sub 0 equals e to the rt. You may also see this as a sub 0 e to the kt, where k just replaces the r. Kind of depends on a preference of how people like to do that. But just remember, a sub 0 gives us the initial amount. It means the amount at time 0, which is when we start. The R is the decay rate, and because we are decaying, it's going to be negative. So make sure your decay rate is negative, and then T is your time. Let's jump into some examples. The mass of a newly discovered substance decays continuously at a rate of 15.4% per day. If a scientist discovered 600 grams of this substance, how much will be present one month later? We're going to use 30 days for one month. Round to the nearest whole number. Now you'll notice it's important that we have the 30 days because the decay rate is per day. So when you're talking about R and T as our exponent in our formula, they need to be in the same time frame, right? So the rate at which it's continuing, this uh, decaying must be the same number of time periods that we're talking about. Okay, so our formula. Lost my pen. Uh, a sub t equals a sub 0, e to the rt. I highly recommend that you do the general formula. Write it down and then say, okay, what do I know? Let's plug in what we know. I know the amount after 30 days is what I'm trying to find. So write that down. My initial amount is 600 grams. E is a constant. Right There's a button in your calculator for that. The rate as a decimal is 0.154, and I'm going to multiply that rate by my 30 days. Order of operation tells me to simplify in the exponents first. So 0.154 times 30 is going to give me a, oh, time out. That rate needs to be negative. Don't forget, I almost forgot, because we are decaying, it's a negative rate. So my exponent is going to be a negative 4.62. So now when I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to do e raised to the negative 4.62 power. Make sure you have that negative sign in there. So I'm going to have 600 times 0 0.00985 goes on and on and on. Do not round. Leave this in your calculator. Then just hit times 600 and you're going to get the amount after 30 days is 5.911 goes on and on. Round to the nearest whole number. Six grams will remain after one month. And the second one here, a nurse administers 800 milligrams of a pain reliever to a patient who just exited surgery. The medication follows a continuous decay model at a rate of 8% per hour. How many milligrams remain in the body after six hours? Round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so again, we're going to deal with our formula. And... What do we know? So as we go through, we're talking about eight hours or six hours. So the amount after six hours equals the initial amount. Well, that was 800 milligrams. E is our constant. The rate, and it's decaying. So that's a negative 0 0.08 times the time of six hours. Order of operation says exponents first. So a negative 0 0.08 times six gives me a negative 0.48. So now I can do my E to the negative 0.48 and I get 0.61878 goes on times 800 and the amount after six hours is roughly 495.02 but run to the nearest whole number 495 milligrams. Now it is important just to pay attention. So in these questions I know that I am doing decay right? I, it says decay, so I know at the end I should have less than what I started with. So at any point in time, if you forget to put your exponent, right, as negative because it's decaying, your answer is going to be positive. I've, I actually did this. The first time I did one of these problems when I was prepping this, I forgot to put it negative. And when I got my answer, I'm like, why did I get a bigger number? So make sure you're paying attention. Don't let your common sense leave you just because your calculator tells you something. Pay attention. If it's decaying, my answer should be smaller than what I started with.